In this tutorial we're going to show you how to make a looping animation of a walk cycle. Now for this we need to have a reference sheet in the background. This one's taken from Preston Blair's Cartoon Animation. I think it's a really useful book um, because it gives us the basic eight poses um, of a walk cycle. Now we're going to actually need to create nine altogether because a looping cycle requires the first of them to be exactly the same as the last. Now poses within 3ds Max and using the cat rig are made by putting the character into a certain position and we are able then to actually use that in animation form in order to be able to um, animate them together. So what we're going to do is take you through the process of being able to make these poses and saving them and reusing them in order to create a walk cycle that looks something like this. To start us off, what we're going to do is we're going to need to create ourselves a cat rig. So we're going to go to helpers, go and change the drop down to cat objects into cat parent. And we're going to probably use a base human for this one. So we're going to click and drag it out. Um, if we do that in the perspective view, and we can see the size of the object. Uh, go to the left view, we can move it into position for our first frame. And make sure that the height is how um, we want it for the object so we can change the cat units ratio to change the height so that it should match up okay so what we're looking for here is to get the hips at the, right, the right point and the shoulders and the head as well at the same time so what we're going to do is we're going to now the fact that we've made it to relatively the scale that we want it to we're just going to move the certain parts just into the position so that we get the same um, measurements on the whole of the object as we've got the walk cycle now obviously with you having already made your rigs for your characters and try and get them as close as to the possible to this um, as you can well the parts of the limbs that are colored in black are actually behind the ones which are white so the white is closest to the camera and the blacks are furthest behind so as you see with a walk cycle the right side is going to have its arm back and then leg front so it's always in opposites so if the right foot goes forward the right arm goes backwards in order to show the transformation of weight so we've got the rig relatively of a similar position as what we would like it to be in terms of height and where the hips are and where the shoulders are so what we're going to do next is we're going to have to turn this into an animatable object so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the motion panel we're going to apply an abs an absolute layer and we're going to turn it on so the animation mode we turn it on so from here what we're going to do now is move these um, different parts of the body into the position that we have on the screen Okay, so we've got a sort of similar pose to what we have on the first one. Now, when you're actually happy with the pose, what we're going to do is with the animation layer turned on, we need to start to save these. Now, it's very important that we save them as something in which we know that they're going to be of remembrance. So what we're going to do is every time we want to save one of these, we're going to click on the pelvis, we're going to right click it, we're going to go to save pose, we can make sure that save whole pose is selected. We're going to open up the folder structure. We're going to select somewhere which we're going to be able to find this folder. So we make a new one, a new folder. We're going to call it test walk. I'm going to put all of these inside of here. I'm going to name this one the first file that we've got, which is contact. So we're going to call that contact. 01 just to show what the pose is going to be I already have other ones saved elsewhere so I'm just trying to make sure that I differentiate 
the name slightly. So we're going to save them as a cat pose. Now when saving as a cat pose, what you'll find is that it that Max will save a JPEG of the actual pose as well, so that it gives you a reference if you're looking through um, the file folder and uh, not quite sure what you wanted to save as the first time. So if we press save, you see it pops up here, and we're going to press OK. Now with the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to move this along, so we've got the next pose um, for this. Now with this next one we've got the low pose so we're going to continue to edit like we did previously um, so that we have again something that's going to reflect what looks like our walk cycle. So when we're happy with that we again click on the pelvis, right click it, save pose, save whole rig, go into the folder, find our folder that we've saved it to, let's walk, we're going to call this low 01, press save again and OK. Okay, so when we've done all the poses, we're going to need to change the time configuration to 40 so that we can get all of the frames in. So we press OK when we've done that. What we're going to do now is because we've got the contact pose to start us off with, we're going to turn on Auto Key. We're going to then click on the and right click on the pelvis. We're going to load pose, which is going to be the low at frame 5, and press OK. So it's now made a set fra uh, keyframe for us. So we're going to go along to 10. Because we've done contact and low, we're now going to do passing. So we'll select passing, move along another 5. I'm going to do the high. Now, when we get to this point, we need to do the contact again. But because of the fact that it's a mirrored pose to the, what the other one is, we're going to have to mirror it in the loading of the pose. So we go load pose, go to contact, and we're going to press mirror. We do that with the other ones as well because we've already made the poses, so we don't need to make them again. So we move along another five, right click, load pose. Now we go back to low and mirror. On another five, right click, load pose, passing, mirror, and then. We should have high on the next one. Mirrored, OK. And then the final one, we need to go back to the original contact pose without mirror. So when we press play, we should have a fully looping walk cycle. Now from there, what we need to do is to make some small changes. Um, to the certain poses, this is called tweening, so changing either the in-between frames or making um, the animation look a little bit more like it's a bylin by laws of physics. So we do that by weighting certain points. Best place to do that is when we get to the low pose of the animation, like we have here, we are going to slightly rotate the hip or the pelvis alongside it we're slightly going to rotate the foot so it goes outwards and we're slightly going to rotate the head to come back on itself and we need to do that on each of them um, in order for us to get a correct weight exchange so when the foot goes down on the lowest part which we've got here we're going to rotate that way again rotate outwards move it back a little bit, move the head, and I rotate it back as well, so that when we 
this animation, we'll have that little interchange of our foot being planted on the floor. That gives it that little bit more weight to the animation. Now you can continue to do lots more with this. You can start exaggerating certain parts. For example, you might want to exaggerate the bend in the back. So at the point of the low pose like we did previously, we're going to rotate the pelvis slightly forward. So the whole of the object will come forward. And we got the low pose again here. We're going to rotate it again forward. When we get to the point of the opposite, which we've got on the contact or the high pose, what we can do is rotate backwards so that we see a change in exaggeration of the walk as well. Looks like he's got a bit of a stutter now. But what we aim to do is try and put as much um, weight transformation and transition between the two so that they loop nicely. Um, however, the first and last frame always have to be the same in order for it to loop. Now, we don't always have to manually animate things. We can add motion capture data as well. What we can do is we select this animation layer motion. So we create a motion cap layer. We'll go into the cat motion editor. Now, if you have something that's already saved of your own, then you'll be able to locate it. But we're just going to use the preset for now. We're going to double click on the legs, the game character walk. We're going to double click that and we're going to load it in a new layer. Press load. We see it progress. We close this for us. And what we should see then is we have the character animation walk um, loaded in. Now, we can have any type of uh, cat data motion within that. Um, obviously, with it with skipping ever so slightly, you're probably going to want to find out which point you'll be able to get it so that the frames are exactly the same in order for it to loop. So hopefully this was um, relatively interesting and at least helpful for animating your characters. Let's see what sort of results you get.